guys, this is Afix, and today I will be teaching you guys how to use the animation graph. And this is a beginner tutorial, so you can just come in here if you know and like absolutely nothing about Unreal Engine. This will be okay for you too. So to start off, let's import the animation starter pack from Unreal Engine. So open up the Epic Games Launcher, go to your marketplace. I'm just gonna go to the library because I already downloaded it. If you were to get it from the marketplace, you just search it up and then click get. So I just can click add to project and I'm going to search for the project I just created, which is my YT animation tut and I'll just add it to the project. Then if you click back into your project, you can close the Epic Games launcher. You should just see this is the third person example map, by the way, you should guys, you guys should start off with this. So here we can take a look at the animation graph for this character. So I just click play and you see the character he's running, he can jump, then he has like kind of landing. So yeah, that's it's very simple animation. And let's just get rid of this character for now. Let's replace him with our animation starter pack character. So go to the anim starter pack and go down here to UE4 ASB characters, drag him in. Then in the details, let's just go under details and search possess. And under disabled, choose player zero. And then control shift us to save. If you click play, you should possess this character. You can see he walks. And another thing is that you can see he walks like whichever direction that you are going in. So you can see if he's walking to the, uh, if you're just clicking A, then his movement goes to the right. And then his steps go to the left this way, then backwards and then forward. Um, and one weird thing is that the other character, it actually didn't um, didn't have the other ways because it just changes like to whatever uh, direction you're moving in. Doesn't matter the camera position. This one, it does matter. So yeah. And now let's go over into the animation graph. So go into animation starter pack and then UE4 ASP hero TPP anim blueprint. So here go back over to this anim graph and I will show you how this works. So this thing right here is a state machine and inside we hold a bunch of animations with different transitions. So for instance, um, idle here, it's just play idle rifle hip. You can see since we aren't moving or doing anything, it's playing this animation. You can also see because of the circles. Go back to locomotion and let's see what happens like when he jogs. So in jog, you see that the transition is if his speed is more than 10. And the first thing you're probably gonna be asking is how did he get speed? So an interesting thing about the animation blueprints is that they do come with an event graph. So here, you can set everything you need. So here, this is kind of the classic anim code. You get the actor velocity, the vector length, and that's where you set the speed. Then you calculate the direction to see where the character is looking, and then therefore which way he should run. Um, like how, how I was saying, if you go to the left, you see his feet actually are moving that certain way, and then right is different way. So. That is how we get these certain variables from the character. And then over, if we go back to this um, part of the state machine, if we go back to locomotion, let's check how jog goes back. And if it is less than equal to 10, the speed, it will go back to the idle position. So basically what this is allowing us to do is just use this for any character. So if I just slap this animation blueprint on some other C++ class character, it would still work. And this is really useful because characters is kind of like a universal class that can be used with the anim blueprints. Now, if you want to get a little more specific, let me see here. They see it's cast to character. Character is just what you use. But if you want to get more specific and cast to the UE4 ASP character, then you could access certain variables from there. So for instance, if you access from here, then you can actually get ver certain variables that you set yourself, for instance, like crouching, something like that. So. Let me see if there is a crouch here and it doesn't work. So we have to connect the input up. We'll do that later. And yeah, that's the basic, the basic setup for the event graph. So everything is just based on transitions and their conditions. And you can see, um, you see that the arrows go to jog and they go to jump, go to crouch. That means that the idle can't just randomly go to crouch walk or something like that. The two things like transitions have to be connected and they can't transition to anything they're not connected to. 
So for instance, run jump can't go to crouch walk. So that's basic animation graph. And here I'm gonna show you something that's important. We don't, stuff like reloading, we wouldn't wanna do in this animation graph. So you wouldn't wanna go drag off of idle and do like reload. Cause what if we're jogging and we reload? And what if we're crouching and we reload? Then we have to go like and make this huge complex network of just animations. So what we do here is we do something called an animation montage. So let's say we wanna do some reload weapon. Let's see, they do have reload weapons somewhere here. Um, let me see this reload, reload rifle hip. So this animation, you can see, even if he was running and he reloaded, then he would just, just be standing like that. So there is a solution. I'm gonna put a link in the description where you can actually make it so that you separate the legs from the body so that the character, the top of his body will reload while the bottom of his body plays whatever animation it should be playing. So for instance here, if you reloaded while you're in the jogging state, then he would be jogging and reloading, which is really awesome. Then if you're crouching and reloading, he'd just be crouching and reloading because the crouching only applies to the legs, it doesn't really affect the hands. And the hands will be doing this, legs will be crouching. So that is how we do these. And to turn it into a montage, what we do is go here, right click, and then create and a montage. And then to play it, we'd actually have to go, let's go to our UE4 SP character blueprint. And on event tick, let's just keep playing this montage. So let me grab tick, right click, right in tick. And then here, just do drag in your mesh and do play montage, uh, connect these pins. And then in the montage to play, let's just do the reload rifle hips, the first thing. And yeah, just click compile and save. And let's just play. So uh, here, uh, it's not working for some reason. Uh, event tick. And it is because we have an issue with input crouch probably. So let's just click compile, delete that. And click play. And it's still not reloading. So let me check out and see why. Okay, I think I know the issue. Let's just do play montage. Montage play. And montage. Then for the montage, let's choose the reload rifle hip. Oh, and I did tell you, I did um, forget something that was vital. So if you see here, the reason why this animation isn't playing at all is because we didn't set up something called the slot. So here, the anim montage, if we go here and open it up, you see that it says slot or montage default group and default group dot default slot, which means that this animation only plays on a certain slot and doesn't play in the animation graph. So to change this, we will have to go to the anim graph and from locomotion, drag off and then say slot and slot default slot from the default group and then drag that in. Basically what this is doing is saying that if after we check out the locomotion, if there's something to change in the, in the slot, then what we'll be doing is we'll just edit and only use the slot animation. So let's go back to our map and click play. And you can see that he did reload for a second at the beginning. Let me go back and then do this. Let's say delay. Delay. Or let's just play it when a certain key is pressed. So let's just do event R key. Or, um, let's just do this left shift, left shift key. And go here and then press play and a montage. Compile and go to play. And then if you click the shift key, you see he does reload. But you can see the problem here is that when he's walking, his feet don't move. So here, I'd have to make this reload animation in a new slot. So I just do a new slot and I'll just call it, let's call it, I'm just click on it, click F2 to rename, or just, how do we need to rename it? Uh, oh, okay, so go to the anim slot manager, add slot. Let's just call it upper, upper body. And this one will be the upper body slot. Then I just save that, go into the animation graph. And then what we do here is after the locomotion, we do something called cache pose. So the reason why we do this cache pose thing is it saves a pose because we can't use a pose on multiple things like blueprints. So for instance, if we did slot here and then we did another slot down here. You see it gets disconnected up here because these things can only be connected to one other. So let's delete that. Then we'll cache this pose and let's just rename it to after locomotion pose. 
and then we will get the cached pose so get cached or er, uh, look after the locomotion yeah so when i lo loco then disappear click it and then i believe what we do is we do blend by bone and it's a layered layered bend layered blend by bone per bone and then we just put in the cache pose and then the cache pose we'll just copy that paste that plus the default slot pose so what we're doing is we're combining the pose after plus the anim montage and we'll connect this up here instead of having it directly to the output pose and we'll connect the layer blend per bone to the output pose then a layer blend per bone up at layer setup under zero um, add a branch filter and then under zero again change the bone name to spine underscore zero one so that should be good let's compile and save and then let me see if it works just click play and then you can see we are reloading and running at the same time so this is one of the core concepts for games like fortnite um, where they do have the player running it's a third person game and you can see that happening in first person games what we usually do is we usually just either use like a pair of arms or a pair of arms and legs no body or head and then people on the who are playing with you can actually see the arms and the body and the head so uh, what we're doing here is more of just overall like what you want other people to see it's not really what you want the player to see in first person i mean if you're making a third person game then this will be very useful to you um and another thing about this is in a first person game you wouldn't need something like an aim offset and aim offsets let me go over that really quick i don't have them made and i'm not going to go over how to make them but what an aim offset does is basically makes it so you can see the player where the player is looking at so you can see if i go up here the player is just looking forward still what an aim offset does is it modifies kind of like the spine so that it makes the player look like he's looking down and to um we could actually not do this in the first person games because there's this selection over here um and it's use controller pitch yawn rule you just check all of them and the mesh rotates with the body so let me actually show you what that does let's compile that click play and you can see that the player actually like just moves every single way the camera moves which is good in first person games not good in third person games so i'll just untick those one more time so that's basically it for this video i showed you all the basics of the animation graph uh, how it works how you kind of just how kind of like the spider web sort of thing works let me see the locomotion state machine and the transitions transitions is controlled by booleans and how the transitions like what they do and i showed you how to get values from the event graph and I also showed you how to use anim montages and split the hips and the legs. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is more of to help people who don't know how the anim graph works. And it's very important. If you guys want more of this, then leave a comment. And thank you for watching.